Hi pals, I hope you're all well. Today I'm starting a vlog and the intention of this vlog is to finish up all the books I have on the go at the moment. So I am, if you watch my last vlog, you'll know that I am just on a week's holiday from my sort of current employer, um, but it's my final week with them. And then I'm starting my new job on Monday. So um, I'm quite excited to kind of start fresh in my work life. And I thought it might be a good idea to kind of start fresh in my reading as well. So um, I'm just gonna grab my cuppa. Um, but I basically have a lot of books on the go. So I use Storygraph to track my reading and my journal. And um, I have a currently reading pile on Storygraph, which is, I think 11 books long. Now, I was made to start this video yesterday and if I had done that, um, it would have been 11 books. It's now 10 because yesterday I um, started my period and lay in bed all day. I sat here um, with a hot water bottle, chilling out. Um, and um, so I, I read a book yesterday. I finished a book that was on my current reading pile. And so I'll talk to you about that. Um, but. At the start of this challenge, there's 11 books. I'm starting it from yesterday. And I have in front of me a list of all the books. So it's like a kind of notepad list of all the books that I have on that curly reading pile. What I'll do is I'll take a picture of it and insert it on the screen either side, I'm not sure. Um, but there's a lot of books on that list and I just want to kind of finish them. I think part of this as well might be a case of DNF in a few of these. And I might do like a kind of midway try a chapter of a few of them which I'm kind of considering and kind of see whether or not I want to push through them this week. Um, but I'll tell you first of all, I finished off last night Crosshairs by Catherine Hernandez and that is a really graphic, difficult read. It's taken me roughly about three or four months to finish reading it. Um, I was very, very kindly gifted this by the publisher, Jacaranda Books, who I really admire and like and follow their kind of what they're up to and always looking at their new releases and stuff um, but they very kindly reached out to me and said would I maybe like to review this and um, I picked them up on it. It's about a Canada, uh, a sort of dystopian Canada in which there has been a kind of climate crisis, shortage of resources and the kind of fallout of that is that a kind of fascist movement has developed in Canada um, and there's a group of people called the Boots and they are responsible for rounding up the others um, and the others are anyone who is not white and anyone who belongs to the LGBT plus community um, and those people are brutalised, um, dehumanised um, really graphic things, horrible things happen to them. It's a really difficult read. Um, content warnings for basically everything I can think of. Um, really difficult read, but it was also, I think, haunting and um, disturbing because you could imagine that happening. Like, it, it felt like very real. And so in terms of a book um, and a kind of story, it's a very sort of interesting, well-told story, but so disturbing in terms of the content and so so difficult to read. I find it really difficult to read. I gave it four stars in the end because I do think it's a good book. It was a little bit kind of heavy-handed in places. I felt like it was kind of um, told rather than shown and things like that. But if you like dystopians in general, then I think this is one to maybe try. So that was the first book that I read. So my current reading pile now, as we are filming this, sits at 10. So I'm starting... This is Monday and I'm starting with 10 books to finish. I think realistically I can probably finish or I can probably get the pile down to five, either by DNFing or um, finishing books this week. I think that's probably a realistic target. I don't think I'll get it down to zero because I do have some audiobooks. For example, another Jacaranda title, A Circle of Five by Harris Joshua. Really, really enjoying it. Yeah, I'm loving it, but it's a really long audiobook. So I'm 30% into it and there's still 11 hours left. And I just don't think realistically that I have that amount of time to listen to an audiobook this week. I'm more likely to be reading. A physical book or an ebook. So lots to read, not sure if you want a quick run through, might actually just give you one. So I've got, I don't know, I don't have all the authors names written down here on this list, I just have titles. So I've got Vagabonds, which is a sci-fi, um, 600 pages, I'm just over halfway through. It's very slow paced, but I'm keeping going with it for now, um, at least. I have After Parties, which is a short story collection. I was loving the first few stories that I read in this. I was thinking five stars and hearing a bit more hype for that, which is good, I think, because I think it's a really interesting, different 
collection and I think a lot of people will like it. I also have a little old lady who broke all the rules. I have been reading this slowly, mostly at night or in the morning. Um, it's like a story about a little old lady and her group of friends and they decide that life in prison is going to be nicer than their life in a care home and so they commit crimes to try and get into prison, essentially. I also have a working class state of mind. I started trying to get into this last night again. I've kind of read stories and I'm, I'm not really connecting with the collection and I feel like maybe that's one I'll DNF, I think. I, I was kindly gifted by the publisher for a review and I, so I feel kind of guilty. It's maybe just write book wrong reader. I also have Period Queen on the go which is a non-fiction about um, periods and how to kind of manage your period and manage your hormone cycle and your period cycle to get the most out of your life. The first half of it I did like, the first kind of 30 to 40 percent I liked and then this next part that I'm into now is quite repetitive, it's quite fluffy, lots of words saying not very much and that's not really the kind of non-fiction I enjoy and so I'm not really enjoying this part of it so that's why I put it on the back burner and I've never picked up since. I tried again last night with it thinking maybe I can, while I'm motivated, maybe I can get going with this and yeah it's just, I think I might DNF it. It's one of the DNF possibilities. I also have The Memory Keeper's Daughter. It's really, really difficult reading. Really sad. I just feel, I just feel sad every time I pick it up. Like, it's like a blanket of sadness. It's like a heavy sadness. Yeah, I'm finding that really difficult, so I've put it on the back burner, but I would like to finish it in a way because I want to know how the story ends. I also have The Flatty Enigma on the go. It's like a, a mystery. It's set on the island of Flatty, which is yeah. in the west of Iceland. Uh, we've been there. It's really, really cool, interesting place. Um, really actually quite worth a visit. Um, very unusual, very unlike the mainland. There are no roads, no cars, um, but there's people who still live there. And yeah, this is about a body that washed ashore on one of the islands in the kind of region of Flatty. And the detective comes from the mainland to kind of help figure things out, but he's new to police work. So he's struggling a little bit himself. <laughs> and I'm about a third of the way through that one. And I'm liking it, I'm gonna continue it for sure. Chris has read it and liked it. And I think having been to the location, it brings it all to life in a different way, doesn't it? I also have some audiobooks on the go. So I have In Her Voice, which is um, the Jacaranda 20 in 2020. They published four poetry collections, I think, and this is like a compendium of all four. I also have Who's Loving You, which is a short story collection. Might finish that this week. I'm more kind of thinking about things, finishing off physical and ebooks, as I said earlier. Um, and obviously I have a circle of five, which I already mentioned. So that should be 10 books. <laughs> and I've got a lot of reading to do and I'm looking forward to it. Um, and I'm just gonna vlog the whole experience and hopefully you're up for come along with me and see how I got on. And hopefully at the end of the week, I will have read a good number of these or at least kind of cleared my currently reading pile and um, decided which books I want to continue and finish. So yeah, let's get reading, I guess, and get on with it. We have had literally the nicest day here today. It feels like you're actually on your holidays somewhere super nice. I've sat out in the sun most of the day, apart from like the kind of, peak heat time when I came indoors again and even had a nice glass of wine out in the sunshine. It was so, so nice. Um, and while I was out there, I finished my book that I was reading, The Flatty Enigma. I actually really did like this in the end. I was kind of thinking, is it just gonna be a kind of average mystery novel? But it kind of really surprised me in the end in the way that the author decided to kind of wrap things up. Throughout, I did feel like we missed a kind of central detective character but then at the end I kind of understood what the author was doing and like I spoke to Chris about it when I was like sort of maybe 70% of the way in and I said to my detective thing and he said um, that he felt like that the, the author actually did something quite clever so I, I do agree in the end when I finished it off and I, I did really like it you can probably see my um, sun cream marks on it because um, I was sat out in the sun reading it today I wouldn't say too much more than I have said about it I'll talk about a bit more in my wrap up but it's a mystery novel and it kind of gets compared to um, Dan Brown's series which um, I kind of liked the idea of but I didn't quite like the execution of it um, but this gets compared to that because it's kind of following the Flatty book, um, which is an ancient kind of text um, located on the island of Flat or um, a copy is located on the island of Flatty. And there's kind of a series of clues and like you have to kind of follow the journey as you go through. So it is like 
um, that series in that way, but it misses the kind of central detective. But the author actually did something different with it in a way as well. So I won't say too much about it, apart from that it might be one that quite a lot of people would actually quite enjoy. I think it might be quite underrated. Um, I'm not sure how many reviews or anything it has on it. I've just recently filmed an underrated book recommendation video, so that's why that's in my head. Um, and I'm thinking this should have been probably on it. Um, but yeah, that will go up probably after this vlog, um, that video, so you can look forward to that. But yeah, I really like that. I'm going to sit and go through what else is on my currently reading pile and just kind of make a bit of a decision whether or not I keep reading it just now. Um, and so I'll do that with you on the camera. So I mentioned at the start, there's a couple of books that I would quite like to kind of do a chapter of before I make a decision on them, but there are some that I think I just know off the bat I'm not going to really continue with. Um, one of which is Period Queen. I just wasn't enjoying that at all really. I, I like the first part, I kind of learned quite a lot about the hormones and stuff and I think if anyone has any recommendations for kind of hormone books, books about hormones or more like sciencey books about um, periods, I'd be interested in that. But I just really felt like it was a bit too fluffy, the Period Queen book. Um, and I had some other issues with like the very female centric language that's used. So I'm going to DNF that one at 52%. And I'm also going to DNF A Working Class State of Mind by Colin Burnett. Just, I'm just not vibing with that collection and I think it's probably just not for me. Um, and so, yeah, I feel, I feel bad about that because it was sent to me, but yeah, I will DNF that one. But I think the rest I will probably likely to continue with. I'm going to do the triad chapter with a memory, The Memory Keeper's Daughter and The Little Old Lady Who Broke All the Rules and Vagabonds, I think, um, and just see which of those I want to continue. But yeah, I'm definitely DNF and those other two for just now. Um, and yeah, I'll check in with you next when I have another update for you. Hopefully we have more good weather so I can sit out in it and just enjoy relaxing in the sunshine, reading my book. It's just absolute bliss. Hi pals, hope you're all okay. So I have an update for you in terms of my reading. But first of all, I do just want to show you a beautiful sunset that we went to see the other night, which was just absolutely gorgeous. And I just couldn't leave out this vlog. It's the first sunset we have seen this year because it's been so cloudy, it's been so foggy and something called VOG, which is like volcano fog, um, which is kind of blowing in at the moment as I speak to you here. Um, but we've had that all summer basically and it's meant that we've not had any of our usual nice midnight sun sunsets. Um, so it was such a joy to go and actually see it. So I will play that for you now and if the sound is nice, which I'm hoping it will be, then there should be some nice sounds of crashing waves as well. And then you can rejoin me in a minute for a reading update. So my challenge at the start of this week, as you know, was to sort of clear up my current reading pile. I started the week with 11 books and I'm pleased to say that I'm finishing the week with four currently reading titles. So where did I get on the other ones? So The Memory Keeper's Daughter, you might remember me saying that I really wanted to know how it ended and I did find that out, but I didn't finish the book. What I did instead is I watched a film which was made based on the book. Um, very, uh, <laughs> how to describe this film? It was absolutely terrible, to be honest. The film was so badly done, like so badly produced. And I'm not like a total cinematography expert or even somebody who really critiques that usually. I just kind of go with the flow of the film. But this film was so badly produced and the cinematography was absolutely shocking. It was some really like, the subject matter of the film is not funny at all, but the way that they produced it, the kind of shots they were going for, we were just like killing ourselves laughing, like why are they doing this? What is this about weird music that was coming in? It was just absolutely terrible. I think it's like a TV movie, but it was made in like 2000, 
eight or something like that. So um, it's an older film. It's not really that old for the quality that was coming out though. Um, but yeah, so I found out the ending, which was my aim with watching the film. And I just felt like I'm kind of glad I didn't continue the book because um, the way I was feeling about it and how far further I still had to go in it. Um, I would say if you like really sad books, that's maybe one for you. But I will say that there's obviously um, really extreme ableism in that and really derogatory language use and stuff like that. So um, keep that in mind if you're going in. Um, but yeah, I was, I'm kind of glad that I, I did watch the film in the sense that now I have a kind of closure on how the story ends. Um, uh, the other book that I was keen to learn how it ended was The Little Old Lady Who Broke All the Rules and I found out how that ended by reading spoiler reviews online. I just felt like I don't want to read 200 pages more of this book. It was almost like quite clunky in the way it was delivered. It was very sort of to the point, um, matter of fact statements um, and very, yeah, it wasn't really delivered in the way I would hope it would be delivered. And I get what the author was trying to do with it in terms of make a commentary about um, the treatment of older people in looked after accommodations um, and in like care homes and things. But it felt quite patronising, the depiction of the older people, and that, that annoyed me. I don't really like depictions of older people where they're depicted as like in that kind of patronizing way it doesn't it just doesn't sit right with me at all so that was one of the things that was kind of grating on me and i'm glad i didn't finish it because reading the review i just thought it's just more of the same like it's not going anywhere that's like it didn't feel like it was going anywhere that was really good in my eyes but that's not to say it won't work for other people it maybe just isn't for me right book wrong reader is definitely a thing but you'll be glad to know that i'm not just dnfing all the books in this pile i did actually finish another book so i finished the after parties short story collection and i thought that it might be five stars by the first few stories i had read um i think it probably sits more like between three and four stars. I did like it a lot and I really enjoyed the way the author explored like certain themes and like um, specifically exploring like the experience of Cambodian refugees in America and kind of thinking about the kind of generational trauma um, and also the kind of pressure that might be experienced by um, the children of refugees who've arrived somewhere and I guess in a wider sense children of immigrants um, who move to another country for a better life and then they want more for their children and the kind of pressure that is felt there. I thought that was all really interesting. Some of my favourites, if you have read or do read the collection, were Three Women of Chuck's Donuts, which was about like um, male-generated violence and trauma and the way different people carry trauma, I guess, partly that, but mostly it was about kind of male-generated violence and the vulnerability of being a woman who is maybe undocumented or is trying to keep a low profile. Um, the shop as well, which was kind of about family and um, kind of more about that kind of generational pressure um, to be something or to achieve a certain thing. Um, I also really liked Human Development. It wasn't really like an enjoyable story, but I really thought it was quite clever. And I liked the way that the author really goes into like that feeling of being kind of early 20s and not having a bloody clue what you're doing and just trying to really like stumble through things and figure things out as you go. I felt like we were kind of swept up in that with the story and with our kind of central character in that one. I also like Generational Differences and Somali, Siri, Siri, Somali. The Somali one was kind of about reincarnation and like the kind of the spirits that are passed on um, and things like that which I found really really interesting and Generational Differences was like a kind of letter to a child that was about the kind of differences that might be experienced by two generations. Yeah I just in general really liked it. I think there, there were some stories that I just really couldn't get into and I DNF'd a couple and that's kind of why I'm thinking it's more like three to four stars rather than four to five um but yeah i still really enjoyed it and i am continuing as well with vagabonds so um i have about 170 pages left i don't know if you can see that um and i have uh, read another 100 pages of it today so i've, I've only got 100 150 or 170 pages left i'm on the f part three which i think might be the final part 
the last 100 pages have been a lot more interesting to me, um, a bit more action involved and I really appreciate that. I'm really grateful for a bit of action because it was very slow paced. I feel like the first 300 pages of this book could have been like, most 100 pages. There just was such little happening and that just wasn't really doing it for me. But um, I'm glad that I've continued because that last 100 pages was a lot better. Um, for me as a reader, other readers will look for different things. And yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of finishing that off. I'm kind of more set on finishing that off. I also read some more of some of the audiobooks. I read more of In Her Voice, the poetry collection, and I finished the, so it's four poetry collections in one anthology. And I finished off Locating Strong Women, um, which was a really, really interesting collection. I'd like to kind of think more about how to review that um, and how to talk about those collections because I'm really not good at talking about poetry. But I do like this sort of anthology and I like the idea of it. And I'm loving the narrations. They're so interesting. I'm now on Jamaica Spear and that's like got a different narrator, I think. Um, it certainly is a different kind of accent and a different kind of total feel to the audiobook. She said it in this and I realised that I never did like a round up of what the actual, like the star books, what I actually did with them in the end and I thought it would be useful to do that at the end of this vlog seeing as that was kind of the whole point of it. So I started with 11 books and I'll refer to my original list I created and kind of talk through which I read, which I DNF'd and which I'm continuing with. Um, so, Vagabonds, I'm going to continue with that. I'm probably about 75% of the way in, so I made progress on it, um, but I still have a little way to go. After Parties, I read. Little Old Lady Who Broke All the Rules, I DNF'd that one. Um, in Her Voice, The Poetry Collection, continuing with that. Who's Loving You, I'm continuing with that. Um, I didn't actually make any progress on that though. Um, Crosshairs, I finished right off the bat. Um, a Working Class State of Mind, I DNF'd. Period Queen, I DNF'd. A Circle of Five, I will continue with. The Memory Keeper's Daughter, I DNF'd. And The Flatty Enigma, I read. I'm curious to see what this will look like when I actually put it on the screen and do all of that and kind of see it for myself, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I thought it'd be a good kind of round up for the video. So um, I wanted to kind of pitch in with that just now and then I will leave you now to past me who was saying goodbye and wrapping things up. But yeah, next week, start my new job, hopefully finish off Vagabonds, I'll be vlogging it. So um, I'm sure I'll speak to you soon and we can have a little update on that. Um, I hope you have a lovely week wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Let me know what you've been reading and if you've read anything in this vlog, let me know if we had similar thoughts or if our thoughts uh, were different on the books I read. Um, thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in my next video.